All right, greetings everybody and welcome to week number 10. That is right, week number 10 of your 7314 class, which is your reference class. As always, I'm your professor, Dr. J.S. K. Austin, and what we are going to do today is a very quick state of the course update, and then we are going to be introduced to a resource called Learning Express Library. So um, let's first get into that state of the course update. Give me one moment. Okay, so the main thing that you do need to be aware of is... Um, that we will after spring break after spring break we are going to have our april the 10th sync session which is on april the 10th and that's going to be with uh dustin koopman who is the head of security for the mid-continent public library system in the metro kansas city area and he's going to talk to us about um de-escalation okay and he is a former law enforcement officer so he's very good with this type of stuff and his uh his presentation is always, uh, it always gets good reviews. Well, I shouldn't say always, but 98% of the time people do appreciate his, um, uh, uh, his, um, presentation that he does for us. And he comes every semester, just like, uh, Lisa Kincaid from Wolfner Library does. Um, one thing that I do want to kind of reiterate, um, again, this just came up on a teaching evaluation, uh, previously. So I do want to just kind of make things clear for people because, uh, the teaching evaluation comment had a, well, it had a comment about, I don't see why we had to have somebody talk about security and de-escalation within a library. If you have not ever worked in a library and you have this kind of view that of like the childhood view that libraries are just like these safe places where nothing ever happens and this, that, and the other, and they're just magically all great all the time, then I do want you to know that you're your viewpoint is naive. I don't know how else to say it. That is a naive viewpoint. Um, the thing about public libraries is that public libraries are the one place where unless you are banned, you can go into, anyone can go into a public library unless they are banned without an expectation to participate in anything and without an expectation to buy anything. And I think that's good. I think that societies do need climate controlled places that you can go into and not have to buy anything and not have to do anything. Just places where people can go and just be. But at the same time, that means that just anybody can be in there. And when I was a public librarian, librarian yes, I had a lot of, uh, there were a lot of ex-cons that I dealt with on a regular basis at my inner city public library. And yes, um, I would take a look at the sex offender registry. And a lot of my return patrons were people who were on the sex offender registry. And I will also say that um, at the public library that I worked at a few months after I left, there was a, uh, a rape that happened on, in that facility. So please do not go around thinking that public libraries are just these places where nothing ever happens and then turn around and say, oh, I don't see why we had to have somebody who does security come talk to us in the reference class. Believe me, uh, if you get a job at a public library, especially a public library in a low wealth area, you're going to see some things and it may open your eyes to some things. OK, so I'm very excited to have Dustin come back. And like I said, like 98 percent of the feedback on Dustin's presentation is positive, but you, you you have people out here who just are in library school, but they don't know what actually goes on in libraries. And what I want to do as a library science professor is help teach you all what can end up happening in libraries. I think I'm doing you a disservice if I don't do that. Um, your lib guides are due on April the 14th, so you have a little less than a month left to do those. Um, and you are also going to have your next discussion prompt, uh, discussion prompt number six, that'll be on April the 12th, okay? So these things all occur after spring break, so you have spring break and beyond to work on those things. And then also just be working on your semester-long projects. Hopefully during spring break, I will get a chance to grade your Wikipedia edits, but it just, turn, um, part of that is just, quite frankly, what else ends up on my plate between now and the end of spring break. I do also want to show you all this announcement real quick about my little March Madness brackets. Um, so if you would like to just do some, a March Madness challenge with me and your peers, then by all means, um, we have men and women's. I am a University of South Carolina fan. That's where I got my PhD, the University of South Carolina. So go Gamecocks. And so I am very, very, uh, for those of you who do follow, uh, the women's side, um, the 
South Carolina's uh, women's players. They are phenomenal. Uh, they almost made it to the championship last year, but unfortunately, Caitlin Clark did her thing and got us out of the tournament. Um, but Dawn Staley has won two national championships with the Gamecocks, Dawn Staley being a former player and a former Olympian who is now the coach of the University of South Carolina uh, Gamecocks women's basketball team. And the men's basketball team at South Carolina is also in the tournament, but they are not a favorite to go to the Final Four, whereas the women are. Okay, so that is that for State of the Course updates, and let's go ahead and get into Learning Express Library. Give me one moment. Okay, so one of the first things that I do want to bring up when I talk about um, Learning Express Library is that it is, again, one of these databases that you will find, just like when I was talking about opposing viewpoints a few weeks ago. Um, this is one of those databases that you will find in public libraries, academic libraries, and K-12 libraries. This is not a academic library database just because I'm accessing it from an academic library. This is something that you'll find in a lot of public libraries. It's something that you will find in a lot of school libraries. And I would even say that the, uh, the public libraries might have the most practical use uh, for using it. So let's go ahead and log in. So again, the database is called Learning Express Libraries. So we're going to go here and go to L. And again, one thing that I do want to also make clear is that I am not actually training you on how to use the database. This is not a tutorial on how to use the database. This is an introduction to the database. So you can kind of learn what the database does. And from there, um, if you do want to learn more about its features and what it can do, then you have the ability to find tutorials online and everything. And um, you do have the ability to go into this uh, database yourself and kind of look around and get some um, get some experience that way through just sort of trial and error and through going in and just seeing what this database can do for you. All right. So Learning Express Library. And so when you get here, you're going to be defaulted into uh, this public library category. You also have the college and high school library things. But as you can see. And again, this shows or proves, again, that this is something that can be used by public libraries to actually have that public library menu there. But you, again, you've also got college and you've also got high school. Now, here's what I would say. The, um, the big reason why you would use Learning Express Library, particularly if you are a public librarian, is because, and this is one of those things that they don't teach you in library school, but it's something that I will teach you in library school, because I'm trying to give you just a different kind of experience. I'm trying to teach you some things that a lot of people don't learn in a lot of other programs. I've worked with other library science programs. I've seen what they do and don't teach, and I want to reward you all for coming to Mizzou instead of somewhere else. So I try to give you all a little bit that you would not get uh, at some of these other places. And so one thing that I will tell you is that a lot of times test booklets do not make it back, particularly to public libraries. Public libraries have a very enduring problem or issue with this, where people check out like test books. And what I mean by test books are like, ACT books, SAT books, GRE books, that sort of thing, GED books. They check those things out and then they never come back, okay? And so what Learning Express Library can do is when those materials are not coming back, you can use Learning Express Library to kind of supplement because Learning Express Library does have some of the resources that you would use um, in order to prep for a GRE or a GED or ACT or a SAT. All right, so all right, so let's say, for instance, that you did want to um, we're going to, again, start in the public library thing here. So if you did want to, if somebody came to you and was just like, hey, I need some resources for the SAT, uh, I was not able to find your SAT test books. Uh, where are they? Blah, blah, blah. And if you're having to say, well, the SAT books did not make it back to us, um, then there is another thing that you can also show that patron, and that would be prepare for college. And if we drop this down, you will see there's a guided ACT course, guided digital SAT course, AP guides uh, for advanced placement tests, and then some of these other things here, and get ready for college placement tests. So. If you were to select the get ready for college placement test, you would be brought here. 
And when you are brought here, then you can kind of scoop me over there and you can select one of these in this case. Since I'm more familiar with the SAT, that's the one I'm going to pick, but you can hit the drop down here. Now, the thing about Learning Express Library is it does require in order to actually take the tests or read the ebooks and that sort of thing, it does require you to make a free, it would be a free uh, login. So you would register and then you can sign in. And the reason for that is just so that it can track your progress. You log in and it tracks your progress as you're doing things. OK, but they do not. This is through EBSCO. So my assumption is that EBSCO, which is a major, major, major uh, vendor for library stuff. My assumption is that they're not actually selling your data when you create a profile with them, because quite frankly, they make enough money selling us this stuff. So I don't think they're actually selling your data to third parties the way Google or something like that was. So you can go ahead and create if you want to go ahead and start mastering this resource, you can go ahead and create a free login uh, for Learning Express Library. And that will have you with the sign in that you can register and everything um, and keep your progress that way. But yes, so for the guided uh, SAT course, digital SAT course, um, you have these options for learning more about the SAT, assess yourself to identify your strengths and weaknesses, focus on SAT reading and writing, focus on math, practice tests, and then are you ready? So you do have the ability to kind of go through this and actually step by step know these various things or do these various things to kind of prepare you for the SAT. And again, because you no, know, I don't I had a login somewhere. I lost it. I had it a long time ago and haven't created another one. But what I would say is, yes, yeah, so if you were to select something like skills review. Then you can see all these ver uh, various things that you can kind of take part in. And again, you have to sign in or register to begin. But um, central ideas for reading and writing prep and all these things here, craft and structure for reading and writing expression of the ideas. Uh, standard English conventions, so forth and so on. So you can kind of test on all of these various things here. Um, and you would see that some of these other tests would work the same way. So I could go to um, the ACT and we would have similar things going on here. OK, so. Yeah, as you can see, a uh, guided ACT course and these things kind of help you out there. OK. Um, now, again, if you want to kind of master this database, then you would need to go back and do some of this on your own time. I'm just kind of showing you an introduction of some of the features and what this database can do. Now, outside of college prep tests, because that's not all we do, um, you do have a lot of these other options. I'm going to stay in the public library domain from now for now. I'm sorry. But some of the other things you have. Oh, by the way, uh, I did mention the GED earlier. If you're doing GED stuff, that's actually going to be with the High School Equivalency Center, OK? So that's where you would find your information for preparing for your GED test, OK? Um, so I'm not going to click in that. I'm just, again, letting you know it is there. But some of the other things that are commonly used when you are working with the um, public library, uh, if you're working with the public library resources and working in a public library and reviewing this database, um, computer skills is another one that is pretty popular. So with computer skills, um, it starts with the really basic stuff, getting started with your computer and getting started with the Internet. I've honestly never even shown anyone these things because, quite frankly, most of the people who now don't get me wrong, there are going to be people of various needs that come to your library. So I don't want to pre bias you too much here by saying this. But a lot of people these days are beyond the get started with your computer and get started with the Internet stuff. Um, so you can likely take them into other things. But there will be patrons that need some help even just learning how to use the computer. The digital divide is real. OK, but um, once you get past that, I have um, shown people the keyboarding um, and typing skills uh, modules that you can do that can teach you how to learn how to type faster. And those can be invaluable. And then also when it comes to learning popular software systems, um, I believe that these are the Adobe things. Let me actually go in there to see, though. Yeah, so um, these are older, but if you want some basics on learning how to do Adobe Illustrator or Adobe Photoshop, you can go into um, the learning computer graphics and illustration. And you can be, these are, again, basically modules that you can go through uh, step by step and they kind of teach you how to do things and make sure you know how to do things within those software programs. 
And then if you are interested in the Microsoft suite, then that's when you would want to come to the popular software tools over here. Okay. All right. And it looks like there's even been a bit of an update here because I don't think the last time I looked in here, I don't think it had it sell 2021. I think everything just went up to 2019. But as you can see, for the popular Microsoft uh, tools, you have Outlook 2019. You have Microsoft Office 365 and basics for that and how to learn the different things with that. You also have, uh, and again, these are like self-paced guided modules that you can use to learn these software applications. I really hope that one day I have the time to sit down and do the Excel one because I need to learn how to use Excel a lot better. But you can also, you see they have them for Word, they have them for PowerPoint. Um, I don't see Publisher on there anymore. Uh, so they might have removed that, but you've got some of these older things for, I don't even know what uh, SharePoint Designer and Visio are, but uh, you have some 14 year old, uh, some things for those 14 year old versions of that. And then Microsoft Project, you see something again, 2013 has been over 10 years ago at this point, but you can go back and find these things. So I'm assuming, but you all can correct me. You can correct me if I'm wrong here because I don't know for sure, but I think the things that have not been updated recently, like Access and Project and Visio and SharePoint, I think those are things that are just no longer updated the way they used to be. And then if you want to understand your Windows operating systems, you have some things for some resources for that as well. Let's go back home and see some of the other things that we have here. So um, a lot of times you will have uh, students at various levels who need help with, uh, you know, in K-12 at various levels who need some reinforcement with the skills they're learning in school. And so that's where these things would come into. If you were dealing with uh, elementary or middle school students, then you can come to the uh, resources for uh, four to eighth grade, uh, fourth through eighth graders here. A lot of times it'll be, it's more likely that you're going to encounter middle schoolers than elementary schoolers with this. But um, doing things for geometry practice. Uh, I believe there's an algebra practice in there. Maybe not. Um, okay, maybe not. <laughs> but then you, yeah, so you've also got uh, social studies. So you got math, English, and social studies. You don't have science at the middle school level, but I do believe that the science stuff is there at the high school level. We'll check on that in a second. Um, but you'll see you've got tutorials and that sort of thing here. So this is very good for enforcement when you have students uh, within the fourth through eighth grades who just need, uh, you know, skills reinforcement and that sort of thing, tutorials, ebooks, and that sort of thing to help with skills reinforcement. They can, this will be very helpful for them. And then in elementary school, you don't have quite the, you just have math and science, no social studies, but you have your basic things here. I'm sure uh, most of this is actually centered around geometry or uh, algebraic thinking. I don't know exactly what that is, but I'm guessing that that will go more into uh, arithmetic and that sort of thing at the elementary school level. Now, at the high school level, that is when you will find the things that assist with the sciences as well. So, yeah, you'll see science skills improvements. Um, I believe they have biology, chemistry, and earth science, so no physics there. Um, but you've got also social studies, um, the Constitution, civics, that sort of thing, technology skills again for that. And then you have English and mathematics. And of course, you should have your uh, arithmetic and polynomials and rational expression, um, calculus. I know that algebra is in here somewhere, but I'm trying to can't find it now, but I'm not going to um, belabor the video by searching for that right now. It's also, I'll show you the search feature here in a second, and then you can find things that way. So some other things that you would have uh, with college students, it's kind of a mixed bag here, but you do have, again, the science skills, um, and these are going to be more advanced for biology, chemistry, and then you even have physics and general science here, and then you've got um, reading, writing, math, and those sorts of things, okay? Uh, college uh, success skills, uh, including, again, keyboarding, <laughs> which comes in handy. It's very good to know how to keyboard when you are actually taking a college program and that sort of thing. But you got reading, math. Um, I don't know if you've got history and social studies here or humanities. 
doesn't look like you've got um, anything there. But then again, you've got the college placement exams and then you've got um, graduate school admissions exams. So that's where you'll find your GRE and that sort of thing. Also GMAT uh, and some of these other kinds of tests here. OK, um, let's go ahead and keep going and look at some of the other things really quickly. So as far as adult skills, I think that one of the things that they have there is. Um, see do they have the immigrant yeah um so the immigration or become a u.s citizen this is something that's very popular and something that you may want to uh refer people to if they're asking you about citizenship tests and that sort of thing and you do get those in your public libraries from time to time so this is a very useful uh resource for those people so that they can become good citizens and good contributors to our great nation and then also um I do just also want to show the job and career accelerator thing here. Um, mostly what I like is uh, the build resumes and job job letters. A lot of public libraries are going to have a ton of books related to how to write a resume or how to write a, um, a cover letter and that sort of thing. However, if instead of giving somebody a book, you want to give somebody this electronic resource through this database, then this is your option for that as well. I've not used the scholarship thing very much, honestly. Um, scholarships are always really tricky for me when people come into the public library looking for scholarship information. Um, that's just another thing that can be kind of a mixed bag. But then you also have like these kinds of tests can uh, be useful for like career, um, trying to find the right career for yourself and that sort of thing. So find career map and I mean career match and that sort of thing. Um, there are the career prep, which is over here. So like if you have people who are taking like law enforcement tests or cosmetology tests or nursing tests and that sort of thing, you would actually bring those people to the career preparation area here. So you'll see these various options. So again, nursing, military, real estate, teaching. Um, I believe there's a law enforcement one there, air traffic control, these sorts of things, cosmetology, as I just said. So these are things for people who are trying to take Things like the, um, what is that teaching thing called? It is, uh, ah, is it NCLEX or NCLEX? Let me see. The Praxis, I'm sorry. So yeah, the Praxis sometimes, hey, Dr. Jason's getting up there in age. So yeah, the Praxis, if somebody comes to you and they're like, hey, I need information on the Praxis and how to pass that test and be successful. Then again, Learning Express Library is somewhere you can come. You also had the uh, Missouri test here. For those of you who are based in Missouri, you've got this resource there. And again, you can go to these other things. And um, the NCLEX is actually for nursing. So I, I was talking about NCLEX for teaching. That's actually for nursing. My apologies. Law enforcement, you've got that here, um, including uh, state highway patrol, uh, police officers, homeland security, uh, clerk court court clerk, I'm sorry, and all these various things, electrician and plumbing, so you have the trades and those sorts of things there, okay? Um, and yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much a good rundown here. I do just want to just show you all what is in the college and high school library stuff. Um, so again, you have like, if this is your uh, college library one, you've got the SAT and the SAT and ACT uh, prep things here, GED, uh, advanced placement, those sorts of things. And they're going to be similar to what you see within the public library. And then if you're looking specifically at high school, then you would come over here and you, again, have prep for college, high school, skills, success, math and science, success, so forth and so on. Now, you can also search for, um, can also just do a search, a preform search. And so if I'm like, okay, well, I just need stuff on algebra then you can go ahead and do this and you would see all of these options here so you have practice tests here it looks like 94 kind of practice tests and that sort of thing 11 tutorials you have micro lessons 15 of them 16 ebooks three videos four articles and 10 things with flashcards and you can by all means like if you didn't want to practice test you can uncheck this and get those out of your results and be left with some of these other things like the tutorials still there okay so the the um the search feature is very very useful 
and then you'll even see um, you'll see this sort of thing happen that as you put in a search term you will see that a bunch of these uh, options will auto populate underneath and that sort of thing um and then another way just to go in and try to find things is to go to centers this way because the centers are basically these things here these little options here and you see them within all of the headings public library college library and high school library but if you were to do one of those centers searches then you would just go to the actual thing that you're talking about so if it's social studies skills if that's what you're specifically looking for u.s history here world history here you can go in click and for u.s history you would have your various options that are going to populate down there okay so that's the basic rundown of learning express library again if you do want to excuse me hold on See, if you want to learn more about Learning Express Library, then what you can do is, uh, now that you kind of watched this overview, you can find some tutorials for yourself. You can find tutorials probably in YouTube and various other places on the web. Um, and you can even Google around and see what other librarians are saying that you can use this for. But again, I will share with you that for the most part, I used it for people who were um, trying to take SAT uh, tests and could not find the uh, practice tests and tutorials and that sort of thing in the library because the books never came back. So people who are trying to take the, the college placement tests or people who are trying to take citizenship tests, people who are trying to take occupational tests, or um, the last thing are people who are trying to uh, find tutorials and learn things like Excel and uh, PowerPoint and Microsoft Word and that sort of thing. Those are the key uses for this database, but it's very useful and very nifty to have in your tool set. So I am Dr. Jace, and this is a resource that will um, help you with AP Place Mint because I just had to improvise on my little rhyme there. All right, I will see you all next week, unless next week is spring break. If next week is spring break, then I'll put an announcement in and uh, we'll see you after that week. All right. Take care.